Hello you guys and welcome back to yet another podcast episode. I have a feeling I'm going to be filming a lot of podcast episodes this summer because even though summer just started, it's been off to like a pretty boring start. Well, I don't want to say that because I did go on vacation and then I came back and I had a lot of fun events and activities and things happening. Then I had my wisdom teeth out and it's just been downhill since then. So anyways, I just got home from work and I immediately wanted to film this podcast because I've been thinking a lot, number one. Number two, because I'm bored and I have to find a way to entertain myself, which there are not many. Well, no, there actually are. Like, there's a million things I could be doing right now. I could be making jewelry for my business. I could be scrapbooking. I could be editing. God knows I need to do a lot of that. I could be making TikToks. I could be watching TikToks. I could be organizing, I could be cleaning, I could be cooking, I could be baking. There's a million things I could occupy myself with, but today I chose to film another podcast episode for you guys. I literally just walked in the door from work and I'm really glad that I had one camera battery charge. I had four batteries, I lost one, so now I'm down to three. So eventually I'm gonna have to order more because they do die pretty quickly and I got like some off-brand ones not the actual Sony batteries because the off-brand ones are cheaper and I'm wondering if those die quicker than the Sony ones or if it's like the same because I have I don't know to me they it seems like they all die pretty fast there's never enough battery life on any of them Anyways, so obviously the reason why you guys are here today is because you want to learn about the victim mentality and maybe how to save yourself from the victim mentality I'm going to try to keep today's episode short. It's also going to be a little bit different because I'm not really doing much of a life update because I did that. I just filmed an episode the other day where I did the life update and there's nothing else important that I have to or want to update you guys on right now. Um, so let's just get right into it. So I definitely think that I have a little bit of a victim mentality and I think that Sorry, mom, if you're watching this, I'm not saying this to slander you. You know I love you to death. But I do think that my mom has a really bad victim mentality. I love you, mom. But it's true. Um, <laughs> she's going to be like, wow, I, I can't believe this is what my daughter's doing. She's sitting on the internet talking shit about me. Um, but here's my thing. It's not talking shit if it's true. Anyways. I think that my mom has a pretty bad victim mentality, and I think when you grow up... Oh! Hi, Luna! She heard me come home from work, and she heard me filming a podcast because you guys know she is my little four-legged co-host of the podcast. Um, I think when you grow up with a parent or parents that have a certain mentality... Uh, you're gonna end up pretty similar. You're gonna end up having a similar mentality. Maybe they have a really positive outlook on life and a really positive attitude and then you inherit that. And maybe they have a really negative attitude and they have a victim mentality and then you get older and you realize, fuck, I have that too. Well, that's okay because today we're here to talk about it and we're here to talk about some things you can do to help yourself. I have been trying to change my mentality for a very long time. It is not easy. It is something that is going to take a lot of hard work. So if you're not ready for hard work, um, don't even bother trying because it is very hard to change your mentality when that's been your mentality for your whole life. For 21 years, I have had a victim mentality and I have been having a negative mentality and a negative attitude towards things. And I think it's because of the way I was raised, but also the things that happened to me when I was growing up and the feedback about these things that was given to me from my mother and family members. Um, so yeah, honestly, no shame in it. Here, Here's to those of us that have victim mentalities and here's to changing that. Here's to growing and healing and learning about ourselves and being our best selves. Um, I think that Something that really hit me hard recently was I have been talking to a guy and he kind of said something about like how I complain a lot and how I have a really negative attitude and that kind of made me be like, oh, like he's kind of right, you know, like I do have a very negative attitude about a lot of situations um, and I tend to prepare for the worst and think that the worst is going to happen, but... If you've ever heard the term, maybe you're 
anxious like me and you've heard the term what if then what that is kind of how I live a lot of my life and that meaning if you're worried about something happening you think to yourself what if this happens then what and then you can find a solution or an outcome that kind of brings you peace so that's kind of a little bit of like how I live my life um like for example my cat was stuck in a sewer drain last week and I was kind of like okay like what if what if he doesn't make it then what you know uh like then I'm gonna have to you know bury him or cremate him or whatever and then grieve him and then eventually get a new cat um which did not help me feel better at all in that specific situation but not to say that the what if then what trick never works because it does more times than it doesn't um but I had this guy kind of bring this to my attention and that kind of made me sit there and really be like wow like if somebody else in my life is noticing this and bringing this to my attention you know I'm sure he is not the only one that's noticed this I'm sure there's other people who have also notice this and I don't want to be known like that. I don't want to be known as a negative person with a negative outlook on life because I'm really not like that. I'm a pretty happy person and I try to be a positive person but my mentality is that of a negative minded person and somebody with a victim mentality and I don't want to be like that anymore and that's part of the reason why I'm sitting here right now filming this podcast talking to you guys because having a negative mindset and mentality and a victim mindset and mentality are both things that have guess what affected my mental health. God knows I don't need anything else affecting that if it can be avoided. So um, I'm obviously sitting here right now talking about this, like, smiling and making lighthearted jokes and whatever, but it is a serious thing because, like, having a victim mentality and having a negative mindset can get you in trouble in life. Like, if you're just thinking to yourself about every little situation, like, oh my god, the world is out to get me, the world hates me, everybody hates me, you're just, like, you're just beating yourself up. You're beating yourself up and you're bringing yourself down and... Really, at the end of the day, the only person in charge of your happiness is you. So you really need to take charge of your happiness and your mindset and your mentality and meditate and journal and write and whatever you have to do in order to change it to make it better. So I'm not sure if I always knew that I had a victim mentality. I don't think I realized. I think I only realized because people in my life started telling me that. And then I was like, oh shit, they might be right. So let's talk about some symptoms, I guess is what it's called, of having, or signs, signs of having the victim mentality, not really symptoms, I guess. I mean, I guess, I don't know, let's just say, let's talk about having, let's talk about the signs of having a victim mentality. So one of them is stating that people are better off without you. If you're telling people like, oh, this person would probably be better off without me, victim, dramatizing insignificant events victim learned helplessness like if you're just completely helpless but that's you learned that because you were pretty much being enabled and because of your mentality victim <laughs> fixation on negative events or trauma victim lack of empathy victim low self-esteem victim needing excessive attention victim blaming others for their actions victim being easily angered irritated or agitated victim and a severe self-pity party victim um so I feel like for me what I have is maybe a little bit of dramatizing insignificant events I don't think I'm helpless I think I'm pretty independent and like pretty like take charge of like when I have a problem I will do what I can do to fix and solve it um fixation on negative events or trauma I think I have a little bit of that it's not like really bad where that's like all I think about or all I talk about but I definitely think there's a little bit of that going on for me lack of empathy I definitely do not have that I am like an empath all the way um so I definitely don't suffer from that low self-esteem I have had major issues with in the past needing excessive attention maybe like I'm starting to like kind of like connect the dots to like my life currently and I'm lonely a lot, and I want attention kind of a lot. Uh, blaming others for their actions. I don't think, 
I've been told that I do this, but I really don't think I do, but maybe that's because of the victim mentality. Like, there are some cases where somebody would be like, you did this, you're saying this, it's an excuse, you're blaming someone else, you need to own up to it, and then I'll kind of be like, oh, you're right, like, I can see that, like, I can see what you're talking about, I understand, you're right, I did this, I made this mistake, it was not this person's fault, it was my fault. So that has happened to me sometimes, but not as much as... I think certain people in my life are telling me that it has happened. Being easily angered, irritated, or agitated. Yes, also crying while angry, gang. That's me. Every time I get like really, really angry, I just cry. That's how my anger like comes out usually, is like I'll just get really upset and start crying. Um, severe self-pity. I try not to self-pity, but I know I do. I know I do. You know what I mean? Um, sometimes it just happens and it's just like my mind it just goes there without me really thinking about it it just happens kind of thing now what is a victim mentality people with a victim mentality feel as though bad things keep happening and the world is against them you may feel as though everyone else is against you such as your partner your co-workers or even your family and friends I don't feel like this all the time, but I have felt like this um, quite a lot growing up. Some more signs of victim mentality, we might have talked about this a little bit already, is blaming others, believing others cannot be trusted, and not taking responsibility for your own actions. I think I've gotten really good with taking responsibility for my actions, but like I said, in the past, there has been times where that has not happened. Okay. Now, I have some tips for you guys on how to kind of change your mentality a little bit and how to kind of stop being the victim or stop playing the victim because in reality, you think you're the victim, but you're not. Cars break down, people die, pets die, people get sick, things break, things fall apart, houses go on fire, what else? Car accidents happen. Bad things happen in this world. Bad things happen. Bad things will happen to you. Bad things will happen to your family. Bad things will happen to your friends. Bad things happen. It's not happening to you. It's happening for you. And that is one of the biggest lessons that I've learned is that when something bad happens, like let's say your car gets wrecked. Now I have no car. Now what? It's not happening to you. It's happening for you. And what did that happening, what did that teach you? I think everything in life happens to teach you a lesson. And something that I heard from Leo Skeppi when I saw his In Leo We Trust tour was, this was one of the most important things that I think he said, and he said it multiple times, things don't happen just to hurt you. Things don't happen just to hurt you. So I have drilled that into my brain now keep that in the back of your mind at all times because that is very true. Nothing happens just to hurt you. And in the time when something bad is happening, like car, a car wreck, or losing a friend, or somebody passing away, or maybe you're losing your home, when that type of thing is happening, it feels like it's happening just to hurt you because all that you know from that situation is hurt. All that you are thinking about is, oh my god, this hurts like hell. When you're losing something, mainly, you know, like, when you're losing something, it's gonna hurt, and it's gonna hurt really bad, but you need to keep in the back of your mind that it's not happening just to hurt you. It's gonna hurt, it's gonna suck, you're gonna get over it, you're gonna move on, you're gonna become a better person because of it, you're gonna become happy again, you're gonna become a changed person, a better person, and then one day you're gonna look back on it, and you're gonna connect the dots, and you're gonna be like, oh, okay, I see now, I see it now, I see that this event happened because I needed it to happen so that way this could come about. I'm trying to think of an example from my life Okay, let's just use my dad dying because that's something I talk about a lot. Um, and that was 
the biggest and probably most traumatic event in my life. I don't know my dad. And I'm not saying that he's a bad person, but if he did live, because I often think about what if, you know, what if he lived and what if he was still here and what would my life be like if he was still here? Um, what if he lived and then my parents got a divorce? What if he lived and my parents were fighting all the time? What if he lived that time and then he died in a tragic accident because he was a firefighter? You know, um, that did not happen just to hurt me, although it will always hurt and there will always be a dad shaped hole in my heart. Um, if that didn't happen, I would not be who I am today. You know, I'm a grief advocate and I'm a mental health advocate and I'm not trying to be like cocky, but like I'm a pretty good person. And that happening to me as a kid changed my whole outlook on life and was a big event that shaped me into who I am today, you know? And I believe that when something bad happens to people in life, you can either choose path A and you can push through and get through it and take your time and heal from it and keep being a good person and leading with your heart, or you can take path B and start doing bad things, bad coping mechanisms that are going to lead you to bad places. You know, like when I was a teenager and I had this happen and that happen, the other thing and whatever, and all these catastrophic events that were so traumatizing at the time, um, I could have started doing drugs. I could have started drinking. I could be dead because I could have gotten lace drugs. I could have overdosed. I could have drank myself to death. I could have done a lot of bad things. I could have committed crimes. I could have went to jail. Um, but instead, I took all of these things and all of this hurt and anger and tried, and I still do try my best every day to turn it into something positive and to turn it into, okay, my dad died and this person died and this person died because I've had a lot of people in my family pass away. That's a reminder that I need to live every day like it's your last. And I quote, Mr. Worldwide, Pipple, every day above ground is a great day. Remember that. Um, I know it's kind of like a silly, you know, like, oh, Pipple song, quote from a Pipple song, but it's true. It's so true. I've had so many people in my life die at a young age or middle aged, and I'm just like, shit, you know, like, this is not fair. This is not how this is supposed to go. I am not supposed to be alive without them alive. It's unnatural, but unfortunately it happens. But I use that as a reminder every day to live my day like it's my last, to wake up every day. And no matter how hard it is and how crappy I'm feeling, to wake up and put a smile on my face and get through my day and try to make someone else's day better and bring a little bit of joy into someone else's day in any way that I possibly can do that. Okay. Now let me bring it back to victim mentality. Let's talk about a couple ways that you can help yourself in this situation. So number one is the easiest one and the, I mean not that it's easy to do but it's the most obvious one I feel like. Take responsibility. You're the only person in control of your actions. So take responsibility. If you do something wrong, own up to it. Feel sorry for it if you did something shitty. Own up to it. Feel sorry for it. Apologize. Move on. That's it. Because another thing that kind of goes alongside the victim mentality is like living in the past and being like, oh, well, this happened 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, so I'm going to let this affect my life still to this day every day and I'm going to just be a shitty person because like this happened to me 10 years ago. Like, no. Own up to it. Feel sorry for it. Apologize. Move on. And I hope that the person that you hurt can move on to because we cannot live our lives in the past. Shit's gonna happen, but one thing I'm learning that is in a friendship and in a relationship, the thing that really matters is how both parties, not just you, how both parties own up to their shit, apologize, handle it, and move on. So number two is self-care and compassion. Victim mentalities are subconsciously adopted as a way to cope often from past trauma, which makes sense for me in my life and probably a lot of you guys too if you're watching this. Um, Self-care and compassion. Having compassion for yourself and caring for yourself is important in every day of your life. Being a compassionate person is so important. I pride myself on being a kind, 
compassionate and loving person. Those are like the three things that like are a must for me. Like those are the three things that you have to have and you have to put your best foot forward, lead with your heart and show that every single day, no matter what. Because people are gonna drag you down in life. People are gonna kick your butt. People are gonna say mean things to you. People are gonna hate on you. People are gonna tear you down. People are gonna try to tear you down. I have had friends do that. I have had peers in school, people I didn't even know bullying me and trying to tear me down. Family. Um, people are gonna try to tear you down. And if I let them, I would not even be posting this, I would not be filming this video, I would not have a camera, and I would not be posting on YouTube anymore because my friends, family, and people I went to school with all hated this. They all told me horrible things about it, told me it was weird, told me I should stop, and guess what? I fucking didn't. Fuck you. That is like the biggest fuck you to all of you, and I hope you're watching this. But my point is that people are going to try to tear you down. And your victim mentality or your negative mentality, you might be tearing yourself down inside. Because you're sitting there feeling sorry for yourself, like, oh, no one loves me, no one cares about me. This happened, and that happened, and this sucks, and this shit only happens to me. And I swear to God, I'm literally going through something right now where it's one of those things where I'm like, this kind of shit is the shit that, like, only happens to me. And you think that, but there are 8 billion something people in this world. You don't know the stories of 8 billion people. You don't know what other person in the world is going through exactly what you're going through right now. And that's something that I try to remember that makes me feel a lot less alone. Is like, hey, uh, there's 8 billion people alive on this planet right now. Who knows what everyone's going through? And who knows, like... Everyone is experiencing today in a different way. Everybody experiences this day. This day that we're living right now. Today, June 25th, 2024, everybody woke up this morning and had a different experience. Today could be the best day of someone's life. It could be the worst day of someone's life. Somebody just gave birth to a child. Somebody's loved one just died. Somebody got into a car accident today. Somebody went to jail today. Somebody died. Somebody overdosed. Somebody got killed today, probably. Um, well, not probably. In today's world, I'm sure that, unfortunately, that is true. Somebody got killed today. Somebody got murdered, probably, or overdosed, or whatever. Um, but everybody experiences the day in a different way. You don't know what other people are going through. Somebody might be going through a very similar or the exact same situation as you. And so you guys can understand a little better, the situation that I'm referring to is... Wow, I have so much energy right now and I do not know why because I like did not- oh wait, no, I did have caffeine today, I lied. I had one of the Starbucks new energy drinks and I guess- woo, this got a lot of caffeine in it, I guess. Um, but my car- I live in a gated community and my car was leaking gas and I got it fixed and it was fine. And then it started leaking gas again. We got into a fight with the neighbors about it because they didn't want it parked here. I can't have it parked in the driveway. I'm not allowed to park in the road. Admin's telling me to park in the garage. And my neighbors are telling me I can't park in the, rod in the garage because the car's going to blow up. Blah, 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 blah. Crazy, crazy experience. Uh, turns out I need a whole new gas tank in my car. Which, like, I didn't even know that was a thing. I didn't even know that, like, they could replace a gas tank. Or, like, that that happens to people. Um, so that's the first issue, where I'm like, fuck. Like, I don't know anyone else who's had this happen. I don't know anyone else who's had a car where the engine fell out. I don't know anyone else who's, you know, been through the things that I've been through with cars specifically. Cars are crazy. I have learned a lot about cars since owning a car, and it makes me not want to own a car anymore because, boy, are they expensive. And everything can break. And everything can need to be replaced at one time or another and everything will need maintenance and everything will need new parts and this that and other thing and whatever but anyways so I come home from work the other day and the administration to where I live uh, turned off my QR code that lets us into the complex without telling me without notifying me at all um, and they told me to park outside the complex let me look at exactly how far away it is. Let's go to maps. Because I live all the way at the end of the complex. So think about like you're going all the way in, straight down, 
about a mile. Three minute, it's a three minute drive. All right, it's a three minute drive. Let's see about a walk. It's a 20 minute walk, which is not that bad for some people, but for me, who's out of shape, it is, especially in this heat and humidity, it is. It's a long walk, I can't do that. Um, so I have been Ubering to my to and from my car every morning to get to work because I took to the I took the car to the mechanic, he confirmed the issue, I ordered the parts, the parts are in my car right now, I'm dropping it off at the mechanic tomorrow, but for the past couple days he said as long as I keep the gas like under half a tank of gas that I am able to drive it safely and it will be fine. So that's what I've been doing. It's also not leaking. He said it's only gonna be leaking if I fill up the gas tank. Um, but my, the administration here is making me park all the way outside of the community and I've had to take Ubers, $10 Ubers, back and forth to get to my car, to use my car to get to work and whatever. Now, this might be one of those cases where this is something that only happens to me. Does anyone, has this ever happened to anyone else? Please comment down below if you've ever had a similar experience because I genuinely am a little bit convinced that this is like genuinely this is a situation that has only happened to me because it's crazy and it's fucking bullshit and it's pissing me off and it's ridiculous and it sucks between last week getting my wisdom teeth out and having surgery and being on my period and then this happening I've been like oh my god I've been depressed I've been angry I've been like why me like what the actual is going on um but yeah just to clarify that's the situation that I'm talking about but you might think that something only happens to you and that's really not the case so it's always like good to kind of remember that but the point is that people are going to try to tear you down in life every single day and people are going to upset you and shit is going to happen and I am a really good person, and I'm not saying this to be cocky, and I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying this because I have the right to say this about myself, because I do a lot of nice things for people. Um, I help my mom every single day. I drive her around. I drive my friends around. I help my friends. You know, if they call me up, and they're like, this just happened. I need this. I need that. I got you. I'm on my, I'm on my way. I give my friends gifts all the time. I do random acts of kindness like if my friends are having a bad day I'll bring them a Starbucks or a big gulp or whatever I can just to try to make their day a little better um I'm like the queen of giving gifts I'm giving gifts all the time I have taken my friends on fully paid for vacations before so I'm a very nice person and I do a lot of nice things for people and I'm at the point in my life where I'm starting to realize that I am being taken advantage of by a lot of people in my life and it's very frustrating especially when it's people that are really close to you and you think you know like you're very close to this person and then you realize like oh my god holy shit I'm totally being taken advantage of and I didn't even realize it this whole time um and when you're a really kind and caring and compassionate person and you don't have a person like that for you in your life it's hard because it's harder to do these things for yourself like yes okay I can if I'm having a bad day I can go get myself a coffee I can go buy myself a present I can take myself on a vacation but it's not the same it's not the same as somebody else doing it for you you know like I'm a giver I give and give and give and give and I'm a people pleaser and that's another problem um, probably a topic for another day and no, I don't have anybody in my life that's like that for me and that has been really hard because there are a lot of times where I do something for someone and then I'm like, wow, I need a me. I need a me. I need a Megan. I need a Megan Rokes in my life. Um, because it gets very discouraging and very sad and very lonely. And then I meet good people, but they don't love the way I do. They just, they don't have the creativity and the attention to detail and the attention to detail and the compassion and the patience that I have, you know? Um, and that can be very hard. But my point is that when you're a kind person, you're gonna get taken advantage of. People are gonna try to tear you up and tear you down and tear you apart and take advantage of you, sometimes without even realizing it realizing like sometimes they do it without even realizing like 
if you're like me and you're always offering to drive and they don't offer you gas money or they don't drive, like, sometimes they'll do it without even, like, meaning to do it. They'll do it without intention. They won't do it intentionally, but they still do it and eventually it's going to catch up to you and it's going to hurt and it's going to hurt you and it's going to hurt the friendship or the relationship. Hi, Luna. Oh my god. She just jumped over here all the way from my desk. But the point is that you're going to get taken advantage of and you're going to get beaten down when you're a kind person but no matter what you just have to keep being you and you have to keep being a kind person because you can't let people dim your light and this is kind of like more of like what Leo Skeppy was saying on his tour is that you're in the house and your window is dirty and there's a sunshine outside but that sunshine can't fully come in because the window's dirty and you have to clean your window and you have to get rid of that dirt and that fogginess and that dust and whatever so that way the light can shine in because here's another thing you can't pour from an empty cup but when the light is shining in my window you know when the window's clean and the light's coming through then I'm able to shine that light out onto the world you know or if I'm a little little teacup and the teapots you know empty I can't give tea to my other teacup friend you know um and that can be very hard but that's something that I've been realizing a lot lately too is that as a business owner and a personal care aide and a youtuber and a friend and a daughter and a potential girlfriend and whatever else I can't give to the people in my life when I'm not giving enough time and attention and devotion to myself and when I'm not happy and when I'm not healthy, I cannot give and I want to be able to give. So I have to pour more of my time and my attention to myself so I can give more to the people I love in my life. You come first. And I also saw something recently that said, you know, the term or the word selfish is like a stupid word because sometimes in life you have to be selfish. And that's true. And believe me. Coming from a people pleaser, it is not easy, but it is very true. Sometimes you have to be selfish and just say no, and if it hurts someone's feelings, it hurts someone's feelings. So be it. So keep that in mind. Sometimes you have to be selfish. Now the next tip for how to stop being the victim is start saying no. You can say no to something you don't want to do, and that kind of ties into like the whole selfish thing. It's not selfish. You need to take care of yourself. You need to take care of yourself first. You need to put yourself first. If you need to say no to someone or something in order to do that, that is perfectly fine. Now the next one is to educate yourself. I'm trying to educate you guys, but also educate myself more on the subject and the topic because, you know, like since it is something I'm going through. Also, the worst thing ever just happened to me, and I was sitting here filming and my camera just goes, no storage left on the memory card, and I was like, you're kidding, how is that possible? But it's because I film a lot, but that's okay. I just quickly put it on my laptop and deleted some of my old things that I don't need anymore. Um, so I only have one memory card because they're expensive and I'm a broke college kid, except I keep saying that I'm a college kid and I'm not in college anymore, but I am a college age kid, so I guess I can still say that for now. As long as I'm not ever sitting around saying, oh my god, I'm a broke adult, I think it's fine. Alright, anyways, um, next, avoid wallowing in negative emotions. So if you're just really down and out one day, journal, get it off your chest, get it out of your head, get it out of your mind, journal, um, Seek connection, I find, always helps me, like, when I'm really down, if I FaceTime a friend or even cuddle with my babies, right? When I cuddle with my babies, I feel better. Or, um, maybe hang just hanging out with a loved one or cooking or baking or doing something that makes me happy instead of just laying there, sitting there, drowning in my emotions. Not that it's always a good coping mechanism, but just distract yourself. Next up. Now I'm running out of energy. It's like four o'clock and my brain is like, 
time to shut down for the rest of the day. Anyways, um, change your self-talk. So if you talk very negatively to yourself, which I do, hello, um, change it. It's not going to be easy, but mantras, journaling, what I did the other day actually was I taped a picture of myself, my younger self, to my vanity mirror. So every time I sit down at that mirror, before I say something about myself, I look at the picture and I'm like, we cannot be mean to little Megan, okay? Because she's still you. So gotta show her love and be nice and kind to her and to yourself always don't ruminate on your problems now this is something I got a big issue with like if I have a problem which a very common problem in my life the story of my life is not having enough money and now it's gotten to a point where like I have severe anxiety about it and if I know that I have to pay for something and I might not have enough money for it or I'm behind on bills even just a little bit, I start like freaking out and like ruminating on it and it's all I can think about. I will literally spend an entire 12 hour long day thinking about money, 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 money. How do I get more money? When am I going to get more money? When's my next paycheck? This, that, the other thing. That is not healthy. Don't do that. Don't do it. Whatever, do whatever you have to do to not do that. Not that distracting yourself or overworking is like a good coping mechanism, but sometimes I think it's necessary. Uh, four, the next one is recognize the patterns of when you lapse into victimhood. Sometimes it's not an issue for me, and sometimes it's a huge issue for me. So educate yourself, recognize the patterns, and do what works for you to get yourself out of that, I guess, like spiral before it gets worse. Um, next one is develop a healthy view of yourself and your capabilities. Um, morning mantras, journaling, picture on the mirror. You are loved, you are strong, you are capable. And Leo Skeppi, love you king, was talking about um, how to gain confidence. And one of the things he was saying was just know that it's already there. Like, when you look back on your past and you, you realize and you know, like, oh, I got, I got through this shit and this shit and this shit, I can already get through anything. And that, like, boosts your confidence. And you're like, yeah, come, come at me. Come at me. What, what, what do you got? Bring it on. Because I've already gone through this, that, and that. And I've gotten through it. And look, I'm still here to tell the story. And I'm fine. And I might be suffering a little bit, but I'm fine. And I'm here. And I did it. And I did it once. And I can do it again. So, number six, okay, so the last one is recall situations in which you overcome adversity. So that's kind of like basically what I was just talking about. Um, think about it. Like, I went through my dad passing away. Trauma. Hello. Um, I overcame it. I went through a severe depressive and suicidal episode in middle school. I overcame it. I went through losing a lot of money. I overcame it. Cut that one out. The next one is distinguish between yourself and your negative experiences. You are not what's happened to you. Don't assume the identity of a victim. And believe that you have the power to overcome the circumstances. You need to believe in yourself. That is one of the most important things I'm learning in life lately as a business owner and a small YouTuber and a small business owner and someone growing up in their 20s right now. You need to believe in yourself because no one else can believe in yourself. But if you believe in yourself, you're going to make it happen. The next one is to realize that you always have agency, which means kind of like, yes, life is unfair. There's a lot of pain and loss and suffering and heartache in life, but that doesn't mean you're completely powerless in the face of hardship. There will be situations where you are able to do something about it. Not always, but sometimes. The next one is change your surroundings and change who you spend time with. Um, you cannot heal in the place where you became sick, physically or mentally and emotionally. And I was in a place a while ago where I was emotionally, mentally, and physically sick, and I really realized that once I left, like, I would never have been able to grow and heal there. So I'm really grateful for that. Um, and if, if your best friend is also a victim and spending time in that victimhood, um, you don't want to be friends with someone like that because that's just going to make it worse for you. Then it's like the two of you, the blind leading the blind, and that is not 
going to work out for the better for either of you. Next one is recognize that having a victim mentality is a form of self-sabotage, baby. It is. It's a form of self-sabotage. And I have self-sabotaged myself in many ways before, but this one is definitely the worst. Um, don't really have too much advice on this one, but at least recognize it. At least recognize it. Next one is make a clear and firm decision to let go of the victim mentality. Why would you choose that over being happy? Make a clear decision. Look yourself in the eye. Look yourself in the mirror. There's a mirror behind my camera, FYI. I'm going to let this go. I am not a victim. I am not going to live my life with a victim mentality. That's right. I'm talking to you, bitch. I'm talking to you, bitch. We're letting it go. We're letting this shit go because 2024 is my year. 2024 is my pivotal year in my life and that's exactly what I needed to be. That's exactly what's going to happen. Period. Um, forgive. Forgive people who have harmed you and caused you to maybe have a little bit of this mentality. Um, and if you're not forgiving them for them, forgive them for you. Don't hold on to that burden. Don't hold on to that, like, don't harp on that, like, this person did this and they ruined my life or whatever. Don't, like, don't hold on to any of that negative energy. Just let it all up. Let it all come out. Forgive and forget. Well, I don't necessarily always agree with forgive and forget, but usually yes. Next up is take responsibility for your life and everything in it. Um, that including the things that are unfair or unjust. Take responsibility, baby. That's a huge part of overcoming the victim mentality. Um, num the next one is be kind to others and find a way to serve them. By doing so, you'll un you'll escape an unhealthy fixation on yourself and your dramas. The fixation feeds the victim mentality while service starves it. So again, lead with your heart. Keep being a kind person. Keep being a good person for you and for others. Engage in daily daily, once a day at least, self-care practices, mantras, journaling, singing, dancing, playing music, working out, reading, watching TV, face mask, shower, hot bath, gardening, whatever it is, self-care every day. Super important. For, for every aspect of your life, self-care is important, not just for this. Every aspect of your life, every aspect of your physical and mental health, self-care is important. Take care of yourself. You are your body. You are your shrine. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense, but like you are your home for your whole life, so take care of you. Healthy eating, good sleep, exercise, meditation, good habits, deep breathing, all those things are more examples of self-care. All right, we got two left. The next one is develop a gratitude practice. Um, gratitude is super important. I think I've talked about this before on the podcast, hopefully. Um, super, super important. Every day I have a gratitude journal and I try to write down at least 10 things a day I'm grateful for. If not 10, three. If I forget to put it in my journal, I do it on my phone. If I don't have my phone or I don't want to do it on my phone, I at least think about it. I wake up in the morning and I pray and then I do my gratitude and I say, dear God, Thank you for my mom, thank you for my cats, thank you for the roof over my head, thank you for my food, my car, my clothes, my shoe, everything. Thank you for everything I have. Be grateful for everything you have because you never know when you will lose something. Um, and the last piece of advice I have for you is seek help from a therapist, counselor, or support hotline when needed. There's things like BetterHelp, Sondermind, Seven Cups, Mental Health Mates, Best Befrienders Worldwide, and the Crisis Text Line. Text HOME to 741741. Um, I will include these um, resources in the link in the description down below for you guys as well. Um, but it's also important to know that there's always help out there. I've struggled recently with being in the mental state that I'm in. I had a college counselor at my college who I was seeing while I was in college and now that I graduated I can't see her anymore and that was definitely, for me, was the hardest part of graduating college was knowing that that chapter of my life was coming to an end because I finally found such a good counselor, such a good therapist, such a good friend 
and now I don't, I don't get to see her or talk to her anymore, and it's really sad, and also it was affordable. Now I can't find affordable therapy, more or less a therapist that I like, things like that. Um, I also tried an energy healer, a life coach. I think that a couple of the things that she said really stuck with me and really did me some good. A lot of it didn't, and I am in debt to her. She was very, very out of my budget, so I kind of regret that a little bit. But um, there's always help. There's always someone to talk to. Life is worth living. You are going to get through this if no one else if not yourself, which you should believe in yourself, but I believe in you. I love you. I support you. I'm here for you. My DMs are always open, and I mean it. I don't get a lot, so I'm sure I'll answer, um, at least for now. But yeah, that's, I think, a good way to wrap it up, is just know that there's resources. Follow the advice and tips I gave you guys on how to kind of combat having a victim mentality and having a victim mindset and a negative mentality. I believe that you can get through this. I believe that you will get through this. You have the power to do anything and you have the power to do this. And even though it may not be hard or fun, it's going to be worth it in the end. Um, I think that's everything I have to say. And thank you for watching and listening because honestly, I feel a little bit lighter after filming this episode. I feel like I can relax my shoulders and feel like as light as a feather right now and I feel like I can just really just take a moment to let everything I just said and everything I researched for this episode just flow and sink into myself because I think I found some really good pieces of advice um, for you guys and for myself in this situation. So yeah. And on that note, I love you guys so, so much. Thank you so much for watching. If you stuck around till now, comment the emoji that's like the girl with the X. Comment this emoji if you stuck around till now. Um, I love you guys so much. Make sure to be following me on Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, Etsy, Snapchat, all of the above. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Love.